Hey, it's Justin here and today we're talking about time management and productivity and why time management is actually very overrated compared to another way you can be managing and even scheduling your days away from the constraints of a clock. So if you've ever been scheduling and you felt like you weren't following the schedule, it wasn't sustainable, you failed in the past, or it just wasn't producing the results that you needed it to, maybe it felt like you were going through the motions of doing it, but it wasn't producing the action that leads to the result that you wanted from that schedule or time management technique, then this is exactly the video for you. And I would even suggest that if you're experience or new to the time management and productivity space this is something that i wish i had learned and have been capitalizing on much uh, earlier on and it's i would consider it a critical part of my efficiency stack it's one of my most powerful weapons against removing distractions being productive getting things done and just being more efficient without it i feel much less empowered to tackle the challenges of even a normal day and my mind's ability to just get distracted and derail itself, which I'm sure we can all relate to. So the technique that I'm talking about is that of focus and attention management instead of time management. Now, a lot of people are drawn to time management because they recognize a problem that they find it difficult to get stuff done throughout the day. They feel a lack of time to do things. But it's important to realize that that's not actually what it is. You see, we as humans don't have a great sense of time to begin with. So how is it that we can notice a lack of time? The thing is that what we're noticing isn't a lack of time. What we're noticing is a lack of result or a lack of the ability to do certain activities or get certain tasks done. So the question is, if I could extend out time infinitely, would that solve the problem? Naturally, the answer seems to be yes, but actually no, because during that time, we would end up just scheduling and wanting to do more things. So take this, for example, let's say that a day was only one hour long. Would we even try to do as much as we want to do in a normal day or a normal week? The answer is naturally no. So what we're noticing actually is a failure of our own behavior or action at fulfilling a certain set of tasks or activities that we wanted to do during a set time period. So time is what is trickling along and flowing, but it isn't the thing that we want to actually be managing. What we want to be managing is the way that we direct our attention and our focus. And an example, an analogy for this would actually be Imagine that you're in a boat and the boat is going down this current. This current in this metaphor represents time. It is flowing and we inside that boat don't have a really great grasp of how fast it's flowing and at any given point how far we have really come unless you're really attentive to the speed and you're constantly calibrating against things then maybe you have a better idea but generally speaking we have a low ability to understand that flow of the current and the flow of time we don't know whether one hour has passed or one hour and ten minutes has passed we don't know whether it's been four hours or five hours or four and a half the human ability to measure time is very crude and very, most of the time, inaccurate. Now, in this boat, let's say that there are certain areas that we want to go. Maybe there are uh, rocks in the way that we're trying to avoid. And so we need to steer inside that current to and from each side of this stream or river in order to avoid those rocks and branches and, and logs that are floating around. Time management is kind of like saying at a certain time, at a certain position on that river as you are going down it, you need to turn here. And that turn needs to take you exactly this amount of time. And then you need to finish that term by this time. And then you need to finish turning towards the next one by the next time. So it gives us these kind of check marks along this river at which we need to make and finish and the duration of each turn. But the thing is, what if we're not able to finish the turn in time? 
What does that mean for the rest of the day, for the rest of this river? What happens if we don't know the technique in which to turn effectively? What if we try to turn, but we're not committed to it properly, and so we underturn? What happens then? So you realize that it becomes much more important to be able to react, adapt, and turn effectively than it is to simply lay out somewhat arbitrarily and inherently and accurately, because of our ability to sense time, when we need to make each turn. And this is why time management is usually by itself, by itself, not a sustainable technique that, that people find a lot of success with. So most of my students and clients, it's very rare for me to see someone succeeding and being productive over a long period of time with just time management techniques if they haven't also started focusing on the on the focus and attention techniques, whereas the opposite is often true that people are becoming much more productive with better attention and focus management. And so this is what I mean by attention and focus management. Imagine that you get up at 7 a.m. Now, time management would say that you need to leave the house by 7.30, you need to get to work by 8 o'clock, and then you are at work from 8 till 5, then you come home from work and you get home by around 6, you go for a jog until 6.30, you take a shower till 7, and then you have dinner. That's what time management looks like. And maybe you have time to do something else during then. This is what attention management looks like. You wake up. Where is your attention at that time? What are you focused on? Where is your mind? Where does it want to be? And where could it be? And those are all different answers. Because just because you may not be thinking about anything doesn't mean that you should be thinking about something. Maybe that's what you want to be doing. Maybe when you wake up for that first 30 minutes, you want to be thinking about nothing and just existing during that time. And that's fine. That's a decision you can make. But if you really need an additional 30 minutes of brain power to do something, that is what I consider dead space of time management, which is time that is spent doing an activity where the focus and attention isn't directed towards something specifically. And therefore, this is time that can actually be freed up and created and mobilized. So you can create more time for yourself effectively. And each type of task and activity can have a different type of subtask or activity that can be stacked on top of it to direct your attention and focus. So let's say that in the morning you want to just get into a focused state. Maybe that 30 minute morning routine could be turned into a 30 minute mindfulness meditation routine where you're still going through the same motions, but you're more mindful of it. And that actually increases your focus and primes you for the day. Maybe that 30 minute commute to work could be used for listening to a podcast or audible and then taking mental notes and learning as you go. Maybe it could be spent on planning and strategizing for the day. So things that don't require you to be sitting at a desk or whatever, things that you could probably be doing if you jiggled the technique around a bit, you could be doing it in the car. You could be doing it while you're walking. What resources do you need? If it just requires your attention and your brain power, maybe that's the ideal time to do it. So a lot of people say that they don't have time for meditation throughout the day. Everyone has time throughout the day where they are locked into something. And a commute is often one of those things. That commute, you have nowhere else to go. If you're stuck in traffic, what are you going to do? You, you can't do anything. You are forced to be in that situation. And what you do with your time at that point is fixed for you. What you're doing in that time is sitting in a car. What you do with your attention and your focus is up to your decision and your discretion, depending on whether you want to be using that focus and attention for something productive during that time. And so the first thing that you'll notice with focus and attention management is that you'll see that there is a lot of time wasted between activities here and there. You finish a task and then you go on social media for a bit, whatever it is, your attention is kind of nowhere and everywhere at the same time. And then you move on to the next task based on whatever time interval. But actually, if you were really attentive after you finish, you're thinking, okay, where will I direct my attention next? 
If it's to relax, then you think, where can I direct my attention and focus in order to help me relax the most? And that could be social media, and it could be playing games, or it could be meditating, it could be cleaning your room, it could be any of those things. But the important thing is that it's an active decision that's being made, so your life is being led a little bit more intentionally. So the first benefit of mobilizing that time dead space is that you have more time available to you, you feel more productive, you feel like you're in that flow state for a lot longer and between tasks as well. You feel that you're able to get more stuff done and overall become more productive. And the second benefit is that you just get better and better at actually focusing and entering into that flow state, that deep concentration, because your brain starts associating certain types of mentalities and behaviors and certain cognitive processes with being productive. And you train yourself to just be someone that is overall more focused as well. So both of those have incredible long-term benefits, which time management alone often does not um, contribute, at least not to the same degree. And now many people are afraid of using this type of technique because it's new and it's different and that time management seems so pivotal, like I barely have enough time as it is, how will I be able to use this thing which seems so unfamiliar and scary? Well, remember, your objective is not to fill the time, your objective is to get things done. So I want you to imagine a world where the concept of time doesn't exist. There's no clocks, there's no watches, you wake up at a certain time and you go to sleep at a certain time, but the idea of hours and minutes and things doesn't really exist. What then would you be calibrating your sense of progress and productivity throughout the day based on? Probably you'd be doing it based on the activities that you had done and where you're going in terms of finishing one activity, moving on to the next one. So you would naturally default to a sense of attention and focus management instead. But unfortunately, because of a fast paced society, we have a fixation on the time. And it's necessary sometimes, you know, like a person books an appointment with you, you know, you can't just say, I want you to do a zoom call with me when I am at my 80% attention, when the, the moon is three quarters full, you know, you can't say that you need to have a specific time. So there are restrictions along this, but whatever that duration is between these fixed appointments, you can be, you know, you should be maintaining an awareness of where your attention and focus is and conducting and behaving yourself based on that, even if you're at work, where is your attention and focus. So there were a lot of times when I was at work where I would be just, you know, there were a lot of spaces that I could be utilizing. And for me, I had a lot of things going on, I wanted to utilize that space, because it made me feel good getting the stuff done. And it made me feel like I was on top of things. So that's why in the elevator in, uh, you know, the stair, the stairwell walking to and from places, two minutes here, three minutes there, I was able to actually continue just shifting my focus and staying in that flow state, constantly navigating the sort of river of time to get everything done. And by the end of the day, when a lot of people are saying, look, I don't have time at work, me doing the same job that they were doing, I was able to get a solid 30 minutes, one hour of additional work done in the same amount of time. And because of the nature of of that work, it meant that I was able to seamlessly transition from out of work to the next thing because I'm constantly thinking about where is my attention now? I finished work, I'm going home, what am I putting my attention to right now? Am I planning, am I prioritizing, am I relaxing? And it meant that because my life was lived so intentionally, I felt that I was in full control over my time. So 90% of my time management productivity is actually really just me having a razor focus on attention and focus management. And I just sprinkle on top some time and task management techniques to help lubricate that engine. And I'm pretty sorted for most of my days except for my most busy days, in which case I layer on top of a foundation of focus and attention management, some more rigid frameworks and some more technical and advanced 
and a little bit more energy consuming time management techniques and strategies that just tighten it up and bring it together a little bit more. But it's important to remember that order. So I would implore you, if you've never given this a go especially, focus on where your attention and focus is, look at time management as a uh, a compliment something that augments your focus and attention management and spend less time thinking about the timing and the schedule and more on thinking about where is your mind and where do you want it to be throughout the day if you have any questions about the execution please leave a comment down below i'd love to have that discussion otherwise stay efficient and i'll see you next time